Hi, welcome to First Pour Wine, Episode 2. I'm Nick Rinaldi. And I'm Greg. And uh, this week we're doing the next two grapes in the Noble Grape Series. Last week we did Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, this week we're going to do Chardonnay. And we also did Riesling. We also did Riesling. And this week we're going to do Chardonnay and Pinot Noir. And without further ado, uh, we're going to start off with the news. Some big news this week for us. We have a brand new website. It's not some stupid blog. It's a real honest-to-goodness website. It's firstpourwine.com, not dot .blogspot or dot .wordpress. It's firstpourwine.com. It's brand spanking new. It's been up for two days, so there's still a couple kinks to be worked out. It's not perfect yet, um, but in, in, in due time, it will be awesome. Yep. We're going to keep adding features and stuff to it. It's going to be wonderful after we get there. Um, secondly, just want to throw a big thank you out there to everyone who's given us feedback this week. Um, the good feedback, the bad feedback, we really appreciate it. We look forward to hearing from you more. Um, the contact stuff is right below the video, and uh, we're going to remind everybody at the end what it is. But for everyone who's watched us, thank you so much. Keep watching thank us. Thank you so much. Um, and we're, things are only going to get better from here. We've even ironed the sheet this week. It's, it's just going to be wonderful. <laughs> We still um, need a new table, though, so if you're feeling if you're feeling up to it, we still need a new table. Um, so, Greg, do you want to lead us off with Chardonnay? All right. We're going to start things off this week with a Chardonnay, and I'm going to hold the bottle farther away from the camera this week, so maybe you can read it. But this is going to be a 2009 Chardonnay from Cupcake Vineyards. Um, it makes me kind of want a cupcake, but they're located on the central coast of California, and this is going to be probably a heavier wine than what we've tried so far. And for the Pinot, we've got uh, Rex Goliath's uh, Giant 47-Pound Rooster. Um, the thing to note about this wine is it's uh, non-vintage. Um, the Pinots are kind of expensive, so we may not have a lot of them on. Um, and in the back here, it's a little confused. It is from Italy, but it's been imported through California. Um, and what's really confusing is the wine store thought it was from France. So. When you're out buying wine, top tip, make sure that your wine is from where the bottle says it is, not where the tag says in the store. It's not the biggest deal in the world. No, but it would be upsetting if you were trying to buy something from Oregon and you bought something from New Zealand. And this week we've uh, sort of made things easier on Greg. And the thing he's using right there is to get the top piece of uh, paper off the top of the bottle of wine so that you can put the corkscrew in and you're not dragging off the whole neck. Also, we don't have a trash can, do we? Alright, now here comes the disaster part. I've never used this thing before either, but supposedly it's supposed to be easier. Careful on the edge of the table, by the way. Well, I know, but do I have to get this thing... Does this thing fit in here, or...? No, you... Okay, so grab the, uh, grab the... Yep, just like that. Just grab it. And uh, just push down. Probably want that facing the other way. Oh dear, this is not turning out Center well. Center of the table. <laughs> Seriously, we don't advise littering, but do throw this in your trash can when you're done. How do I pull it out? You just pull up. Um, come, bring it closer to yourself so that you can get leverage. Yep. Just pull up. There you go. Oh my gosh, it didn't take me five minutes. It just slides right out. Concept. Let me see that. There you go. Yeah, sure. And to get these out, what you do... You just hold it down, pull forward, and then you slide it right off. Try not to lose that. And now I'm going to try not to look like a complete boss with this thing too. I was always fascinated by the corks. Now it comes. By the way, um, when you are smelling the wine, do not smell the cork. Aren't um, you supposed to smell the cork? No, all it will do is confuse you and you will smell cork. I'm um, still going to show off. The reason why you used to look at the cork was that some places, when you went out in France, for instance, would um, would sometimes swap out an expensive wine for a cheap wine, and then they would put the cork back in. And so the idea is that the cork can actually uh, help you know that the wine is the wine you indeed bought. So that is yeah. the reason for the cork. You learn something new every day. So we're going to start with the Chardonnay. So, All right, and the first thing we're going to start off with is the color. Yep. All so right, I brought something for this. Is that a pillowcase? No, <laughs> it's not a pillowcase. No. It's, a, it's one of these. Oh, well, that was why I put these out, but okay. Well, but that has gray 
stuff on it. You don't want that. Check this out. It's all white, with the exception of that. I don't know what that is, but... Anyways. That. All right, this looks a little bit darker around the edges. Good call. That's exactly how a Chardonnay should look. And you can see it's got that nice golden straw color. Hopefully you can see that in the camera. And so let's give it a little smell. Got to get that swirl. Mm, okay. Mm. Um, and instead of a... Very strong, if I remember correctly, compared to what it was last week. So what do you get out of it? I don't know, it's something I can't place. Okay, I get... What do you, what do I you get, get a little bit of vanilla. Um, I'm also getting a little bit of tropical fruit in there too, maybe like a lime. I, I, a little maybe bit. a little bit of something tropical like a pineapple. Yeah, pineapple is a good adjective for this wine. But it's not as tropical as like the other two. No. Uh, it's maybe it'll taste... It's better. subdued by the oak, you can smell that. Oh, uh, so I'm allowed to smell wood in this one. There is wood in this, yes. It shouldn't be in wood, but it's the barrel's wood. Let's give it a taste. Just first a small sip. Hmm. What do you think? Oh, no. It is not a sweet wine. It is a dry no. white wine. So I was just going to say, it, it seems very dry to me. I don't take a, taste a lot of that tropical stuff. Maybe something slightly melony. I get a little bit of melon. I get some pineapple, too. Um, Actually, I'm not getting that. Well, everybody, everybody tastes a little something different in here. The only thing is, um, I expect more oak from the smell. But uh, It's funny, I don't... Compared to the last week when I got wood in something that apparently it's no wood, I don't get very much wood. I get a little vanilla, but not a lot. It's um yeah, I can. It's got more acid than I would predict. It's pretty acidic. Okay. Um. So how do you feel in your mouth, though? Uh, definitely a little bit heavier. Okay. Like like we predicted, I guess. Um, it also. I mean, it hits. I'm gonna, I gotta try this again. Sure. You know, it sort of goes in the mouth, and then it seems like it just sort of evaporates away, as if it's a much drier. It seems it's a lot drier. The aftertaste isn't. Quite yeah, and the aftertaste is kind of bitter. It's got a little bit of lemon pith going on. Yeah, it's not. So let's it's not the most appetizing thing. Let's in the world. move on to the uh, red, and the let's red. take a look at the uh, edge of the pinot. Now, for, for a red wine, this looks a lot lighter than what I would expect. It's almost, you can almost see it's a little watery on the edge. Mm -hmm. The edge of pinots normally have a bit of a watery kind of consistency to them. That's one way you identify a pinot. So, let's uh, give it a smell. Now this one, you can smell the wood. I'm getting a lot of wood. It, it, it may have some. Pinots are notoriously difficult to grow. I get, um... I get some kind of mushroom smells. A little bit of earth. Earth. I was gonna say like dirt. Yeah, you can smell no, a little bit. It's not it's not that pouy marid smell that you sometimes get in um in French wines, which is literally, you know, barnyard smell. Mm hmm um, Maybe a, something a little nutty. I can see a little bit nut. I also get I get a bright kind of cherry note out of it too. Yeah, I can I can definitely hit, see the cherry. But it's not as fruit forward as that tries to be. Correct. Okay, let's, let's give it a little taste. Wow. That, there's really not much to that taste-wise. I thought it was like water. Well, it's not quite that thin. Are you getting any fruit out of it? I get a little. A little bit of cherry. I get a very, yeah, small amount, like a bitter bing cherry. Not quite ripe yet. Um, yeah. But, yeah, overwhelmingly, there's there's kind of a tobacco-y, um, yeah. earthy like taste. A, like a leafy, something and, leafy as opposed to something... And this um, wine, this wine is old world. And when we talk about old world, um, you know, we're talking about continental Europe, we usually do describe a lot of um, kind of... Uh, really earthy terroir flavors. Um, yeah. 
Not a lot of tans in this, so we'll talk more about tans next episode. But, um... Yeah, I don't, I'm not really getting very many tannings this year. Very, very typical of Pinot. Um, Classic. This isn't exactly a great example of a Pinot, but at the price point, this one was about 8 bucks. Not a bad choice if you're just looking for something to try. Um, it's okay. Both of these wines clocked in... Uh, Under I think 10 bucks. This one was... Yeah, this one was about seven fifty, and that one was $9. Um, so not too bad. They're completely reasonable. Um, and these were these were nice. Um, they're not too bad. Which which did you like better? I kind of want to go back and forth between them. Okay, that's a good idea. Tell me how. Well, tell me what you think the Chardonnay tastes like after you've tried the peanut. I don't like the Chardonnay after the Pinot. I'll tell you that. The Chardonnay got a lot sweeter for me. Yeah, almost too sweet. For my humble opinion. It was okay. I'm not sure it was the best thing ever. But anyways, try it for yourself. Um, yeah, exactly. Don't take our word and, for and it. And try this experiment, you know, at home. Get a bottle of red, get a bottle of white. Go back and forth between the two of them and see how they change while you taste each. Um, have a wine party with your friends. Have them bring over bottles. It's another great way of doing it. It is um, a great way of doing it. That's pretty much it for this week. Um, I think Greg's making a hat. No. Look at that. Anyways. It's a bunny. It's a bunny for Easter. Oh, boy. Anyways. Well, um, I hope you had a good time. Um, Greg hasn't even had a full glass of wine yet. And it's gone to his head. It's a bunny. Uh, Everyone want to see the bunny? But if you want to contact us, um, feel free to give us a tweet on Twitter. Um, you can get a hold of us at First Pour Wine. Uh, that's our Twitter name. Or you can check us out, like I said, on our brand new website, firstpourwine.com. And like Nick was saying earlier, we really appreciate your feedback. We really want to hear from you. Um, a lot of different ways to get in touch with us. You've got the Twitter, send us a tweet elite. Um, you can leave a comment on the YouTube video or our website. Or if you feel really inclined or you want to send us something in private, you can email us at firstpourwine at gmail.com. All right, guys. Hey, thanks for watching. Keep trying wines. We'll see you next week. Happy Easter! <laughs>